Hello and welcome, you're here with Miss Libby Rose. Hello, and we are going to be making a super easy jersey skirt. So, in order to do this, you will need some jersey fabric. Now, if you take your waist measurement, so just take your measurement around your waist. Oops, I've got not any old tape measure. Right, so if you take measurement around your waist, then you will know how wide it will be. And then just go from your waist down to your length. And then you'll know how long you need your piece of fabric to be. Now double check that it is stretching this way. So the stretch is gonna be going around you the most. And then where there's less stretch, that goes on the up and down. Okay, so it's more stretch around you and then the less stretch in the fabric. And it's normally selvage to selvage is um, has got the more stretch but do double check because sometimes fabrics are different now the reason why i am not doing anything too complicated today is because i just finished at the knitting and stitching show as you know and i had some lovely jerseys left over and this jersey has got some some sort of sparkles in it and it just looks very pretty and i didn't really want to do anything too complex with it i just want it in a long straight skirt that i can wear now some of you have made some comments that you would like to be able to get into clothes making more and i just wanted to give you a super simple step to get you into making and then you can of course take it take your making to another level i've got in my sewing for confidence course uh, the into in between a class you do a made to measure skirt so you take all your measurements and plot them down on paper and then we make up the pattern and then you can make up the skirt but for this one we're not doing any plotting on paper you're just having one piece of fabric making sure that will go the whole way around you and then when you fold that in half, then you can check that this is the right length up and down. Now, when we work with jersey, as some of you might have known if you've done the leggings class with me before, we talk about negative ease. So instead of adding positive ease, like a 1.5 seam allowance, a 1.5 for ease, and things like that, that we do with cotton fabrics, well, this is still cotton, but um, it's a different stretch. So uh, with this, we sometimes use negative ease. So we actually take off, um, so we take off some seam allowance and some ease. So that's why we're going to do this with exact measurements. So this is exactly around my middle going down. And this is uh, to the length. And you could leave a little bit extra at the bottom for uh, say a 1.5 centimeter hem along the bottom. And also, because we'll put some elastic in the top, we're going to put one inch elastic in the top. So leave some space for a channel around the top as well. So if you leave yourself over an inch to fold down at the top, then that is good. Now, when you cut your fabric, it can slip and slide all over the place. So fold it in half lay it down flat on your table and really double check that you've got it in a nice rectangular shape and maybe line up your pattern so that all of those lines are going nice and straight then once you're happy with that change the needle on your machine to a ballpoint needle a jersey needle or a stretch needle um, and do check the weight so weight of the fabric as well these needles come in different sizes just like your regular sewing needle does so you've got say size 12 to 14 for a medium you've got 70 are lightweights and then 16 18 if you've got a heavier weight jersey so do double check that and um, yeah and change your sewing needle first of all in your machine now if you are lucky enough to have one of these babies walking foot then do change your machine to the walking foot as well because this gives you nice because as I said about the jersey fabric it does slide around so this will just help you it sort of walks over the fabric and gives you a nice um and, and doesn't let it slip so much. But if you don't have one of those, that's absolutely fine. You can just use your normal zigzag foot or um, just the straight stitch foot that you use with your zigzag on the machine. Um, 
and then we just need and then you just have your elastic so get that ready for uh, when we're ready for that too and it won't be long before we will need it so then we put right sides together and we're just going to have one long back seam so there'll just be one seam going down the back now this will slide so do pop your pins in and get that so that it's not going to slide all over the place then you set your machine making sure you've got that special uh, needle in there first because the machine will skip stitches otherwise then you set your machine to now on the Janome's we've got number six which looks like a lightning bolt stitch and that is really good for sewing with stretch you can also use uh, any of the zigzag type stitches um, whichever machine that you're using now do double check on in your manual because if there is a special stitch for zigzagging then it's going to make your life so much better and it's good to know as well because it is good to use the right stitches um, for the right right projects it's just yeah it's just lovely to actually know that so as usual I'll start with my backwards so I take it all the way up to the top and now I just do a, a zip well I'm doing the stretch stitch a foot width apart from the edge of my fabric so it gives me a little bit of a seam down the back there and I'm just gonna sew all the way down that back seam so I'm just gonna have a seam just going down the back for this now because this is a straight jersey skirt what I'm going to do is leave a split okay so that's why I've got this um, I've got this seam allowance as well so that I can then leave a split going up the back because I wear skirts with my like Dr. Martin boots and stuff like that so it's quite cool to have a split going up the back so I'm coming down and when I get to a good length so I shall tell you what that is I've come down to uh, about 12 inches from the bottom of the skirt and that will be enough for my split so once I get to that spot do a little bit of backwards again it's just gonna let me do a bit and then I finish Then I open it up. So I've got this flat seam open at the back and I'm just going to run a hem down either side, down there and down there from that seam just to give me that open split. So again, you do want to get some pins in there because it slides all over the place so if you put your pins in perpendicular to your stitch line so we're sewing down here so put your pins in horizontally to your vertical line and then give yourself a nice stitch up to where you've sewn before so up to that back seam so I'm not putting pins in but please do because it makes your life easier and I am sticking to this um, the lightning bolt stitch so I'm sticking to the zigzag stitch or you'll be the zigzag or the um, stretch stitch it's really great to know if your machine does have a stretch stitch because it makes life so much easier and nicer and it's good to be kind to the machines as well so you can do the right thing by your machine really so now I've taken that up to the back seam so now I've got a nice split on one of the sides so that's just taken me up to that back seam and then repeat the same on the other side and once you've got those then you will need your elastic so then you go to the top of the skirt open up the seams and we're going to create a channel so I know that my elastic is one inch wide so I'm going to give myself a fold of one tiny centimeter and then fold again 
again, so I've got that inch for the elastic to go in. So we're going to channel that around. So this really, really, really important to pop pins in this time. So the first, the first fold is a tiny centimeter. just for neatness and the second fold is the inch for the elastic to fit in okay as you're going around it should start to sit in nice and flat now that first centimeter is just there for neatness so that you don't have this funny raw edge at the top of your skirt so it just folds down once and then once again. Then you're gonna sew all the way around to create a channel. When you get back to your back seam, stop and leave a gap. Again, you could just leave an inch, but you're going to, that's where you're going to feed the elastic through. So go ahead and do this channel, leaving a gap at this back seam. So now that we have our channel all around the top of the skirt, we then take a piece of elastic. Get this elastic nice and snug around your waist with just a teeny bit for sewing, but you want that nice and snug fitted around your waist. Then leave yourself a little bit of extra lax there so that you can sew that up at the end take one of the sides, pop a safety pin in one of the ends and then slide it into the channel. Now you might want to pin this, the, the other bit to the entrance as well so that you can Shuffle the elastic through, but not lose the end. So don't let the end go into there as well. So go through with your elastic and also making sure that we don't um, do a twist as we go along, because that's another thing that can easily happen. So I've just got that safety pin. With that safety pin, it's helping me feel for the elastic as it's threaded through. Keep threading, keep threading. Once your elastic has been threaded through and you've got the safety pin poking out the, the, the end, so we've got two pieces now of elastic out the end. I then overlap these, really making sure I haven't twisted anywhere in there. And then I just sew backwards and forwards with a zigzag stitch. So go a few times backwards and forwards to really make sure that sticks together. So I just go backwards and forwards about three or four times for this because I don't want the elastic to bust open inside the channel. That would be very nice. Okay, then I just shuffle this back out and we've got our waistband done. And I just need to stitch up the hole where we left in that channel and stitch along the bottom. So the bottom of the channel, just where the hole was, I'm going to stitch that up, done. Lovely, and pull that out. Now, I've got the whole top of the skirt. The only thing left to do is the hem at the bottom. And what I do there is, I get my pins, and I fold it up one centimeter, then another centimeter. So you have like a rolled hem going along the bottom, put pins in along there and sew the whole way around and then your skirt is finished. And the only thing left to do after that is to try it on. So it's just a super easy skirt. 
but what I think is lovely about it is that it's a good way to show off some fabric without getting too complex. So I'm there and I'm in and on. I'll move that out of the way so you can see. So you can see that there's nothing too fancy. It's just going to sit there around my waist. But what I'm really doing is just showing off some lovely glittery fabric. Now, what you could also do is have some fun with the hem as well. So you could like maybe go up at the front, come down at the back or do sort of an angular sort of uh, shape on the skirt as well. So you could just have some fun, but really using jersey fabric and um, yeah, having a play like that, making sure that you've got your uh, needle. So your jersey needle in there and and some elastic and really if you want to work a lot with um, jersey fabric then do get yourself a um, do get yourself a walking foot because it makes life so much easier so that is today's Sunday sewing make thank you so much for um, yeah for joining me and I will see you on Wednesday for another Wednesday win thank you bye for now